Well, this is the final of Players' Championship 19. We have a man who perhaps you might have expected to be here. He is in form. He's won a couple of TV titles in the last few weeks, and he's looking to win his first ranking title of the year. Peter Snakebite Wright, the world number five and one of the top seeds here today in Barnsley. But he goes up against a man in Justin Pipe, who has an incredible pedigree in this game. He's won six titles. He's made three major semi-finals but he has not found himself at this stage of a ranking tournament for four years, and he hasn't won one for half a decade. He has been playing well over the last four months, really, three and a half, four months. But for him to come through the field, as he has done today, this is a surprise. And it would be a big surprise if he were to go on and win it. But he's got himself a chance. Can the force roll back the years and claim a seventh PDC ranking title, or will Peter Wright make it three titles in a manner of weeks? I'm Dan Dawson, Chris Murphy, One alongside minute. me for the final here in Barnsley. It is Snakebite versus The Force. Yes, thanks, Dan. Justin Pipe appearing in his first PDC final for just over four years. 104. Peter Wright appearing in his first for just under four days having won the German Masters on the World Series at the weekend. And it has been a, a long time coming for Justin Pipe and his form really 46. turned halfway through this season with a, a run on the European Tour when he was kind of crowd surfing, wasn't he, after winning a, a last 16 match in Germany. Peter Wright 100. went through the first few months of this season without winning a title but all of a sudden as you just mentioned he's won three or oh, he's won two rather he's on the precipice of winning three this afternoon One hundred and thirty. just beaten the man that he won his first of the season with in the semi-finals in Gary Anderson well you can look at the stats you can look at how these two have played all day and Peter Wright is the standout player. There's no question. He's been the best player so far today. And that 180 is his 22nd of the day, which is a lot. Yeah, more than anyone going into the match with Anderson. Many would have been surprised to hear that Peter had hit more maximums. But this is the kind of range that Wright has been clinical in throughout this tournament and throughout the last five years or so. They almost kind of swapped places a few years ago, right, and Pipe will come back to that point. But here he wants double 13 to break. 55. Similar kind of shot for Justin Pipe. 18 segment for him. Staying there. Oh, no, 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 no. It's just died and dropped and fallen into the fort. And it means he doesn't even get a dart at the bullseye. 32. Well, a miscount. We had plenty of that in the semi final between Wright and Anderson. Game shot. But Wright tidies up and does break in leg one. This is exactly what he did in the semi final and then just defended it from there. Got another one towards the end of that match. And he's drawn first blood here. Well. You look at the stats, you think there's only one winner. Because one so far three. today, Peter Wright, who is now trying to drag his up average up massively, he's averaged 101.26 going into the final for the whole day. That is 10 points more than Justin Pipe. Pipe, so far this year in the Players' Championship Series, he's had two averages over 100. Peter Wright has had three today. But it's a one-off game. And we know, look, we've seen today that Michael Smith averaged 100 in his first round game and was beaten by somebody averaging 10 points less than him. It's not about averages, it's about taking the right shot at the right time. And particularly in the semi-final against Ron Muhlenkamp, Justin Pipe pulled out a couple of tonne-plus checkouts at really crucial times. You think he's going to need more of that against Snakebite, who is playing really well today. Well, just to highlight how their careers have kind of changed hands in the last half a decade, 100. Justin Pike won the last or the most recent of his six PDC titles in 2014. Peter Wright won his third that year. 
In fact, his third title came against Justin Pipe in 2014. Peter has now got 23 PDC titles. 20 since then. Well, I have maintained for quite some time now as Peter Wright looks at the bullseye for a 1-2-1 one, one finish. Well, surely he's not thinking of laying up here. Of course he isn't. 96. Let's just see if Pipe can take this. Treble 19 leaves the bullseye. Not going to get a go. And snake bite. I think he's going to go 5 for double 10 here. It's been a recent thing for him. He used to be a 9 for double 8 man, but seems to have changed his MO. The problem with the shot is if you hit the 10, you've got to get over the dart in the single 5. He's gone outside, so he doesn't have that to contend with here. Game shot. And he does double his lead. Yeah, I'm not sure about that shot, but snake bites made right on it. Well, he's been winning titles with it, so fair enough. And in actual fact, it's the double eight that was central to the point I was about to make. I think, Peter Wright, when you look at the number of TV finals he has been in and the number of times that he has been beaten by Gary Anderson, Michael Van Gerwen and Phil Taylor, then, and he's been close. He should have won the Grand Prix last year against Michael Van Gerwen. He definitely should have won the Premier League uh, against Michael Van Gerwen in 2017. And he's been close in other finals as well. The... Champions League, of course, against Gary Anderson last year. Now, if he'd picked up one, two, three more big titles, you would immediately be talking about Peter Wright as one of the greatest to have ever thrown a dart with the hall of major 60. titles that he's had. But as it is, all he's got, I say all he's got, is the UK Open and a couple of the World Series wins. And people can overlook that. But he has genuinely, for a number of years now, been incredible. 140. Yeah, for all those TV wins, it is one singles major title, isn't it, as you would call it. He, of course, won the World Cup with Gary Anderson as well for Team Scotland. And was the best player there. Didn't lose a game at all over the course of the tournament as Pipe looks at double 12 game and shot. pins it. That's a great 11-dart leg from Justin Pipe to get himself into this final. Well, it's already gone better than the last final that Justin Pipe was in because... The Dutch Darts Masters, over the summer of 2015, where he'd carved his way through the field, not exactly carved, actually, sort of struggled his way through the field. It was similar to this. Van Gerwen was averaging over 100 for, uh, for the tournament. Pike was averaging around about the 90-91 mark. And Van Gerwen did not give him a single leg. But Pipe here, he is trailing 2-1, but he's averaging more than 110. <laughs> 140. Justin Pipe has lost the last three meetings between the pair. Hasn't beaten Peter Wright since the autumn of 2016. He was here in Barnsley. Yeah, curiously, that was the day that he made a semi-final, the last time he made a semi-final. So it was a big day for him. 91. The final was contested between Dave Chisnell and Benito van der Pass, another man who's suffered a slide, a slump in form. He won that final that day. 6-1 against Chizzy. 180. Snake bites. Piles in another max. 24 for the afternoon now. That is three 180s in four legs for Peter Wright. Oh, that's so frustrating for Justin. Can he force that one underneath it? Well, it would have been a wonder shot. But he's also averaging more than three a match, isn't he, Peter Wright? As he looks at 88 here, doesn't have to bother with the ball. Wouldn't have had to bother with it anyway. 74. Well, it could get a little tricky here for Peter Wright. Let's just see if Justin can pile some pressure on. He should do from there. And the first dart was perfect for him. And it's One no surprise to see him fill it up. And it's a bit of a dead cat shot, really, just as almost a distraction to Peter Wright, leaving himself double 15. Or distraction. Or destruction. Game All right. Shot. Saves his snaky skin on double two. 
100. Well, he, he's a brave man there, Justin. Yes. Shades of Simon Whitlock in Prague. Remember that one? I do, yeah. 130 for the match, and it threw one dart, and the single 20 that knocked the treble 100. out didn't get a dart at the ball to win, and the wizard went through. And who knows what might have happened with Justin Pike, because, we, look, we've seen it over the last four months. He's been playing darts that have been good enough to win games and go on runs, and look at this. I mean, Justin Pike, that's his second 180s. He's, he's approaching 20 for the day. He is still averaging huge amount more than 100. In fact, more than 110 still in this match. But Peter Wright is 3-1 up because Peter Wright is all day. He has been... I mean, ever since the third round where he, he demolished Dimitri Vandenberg with 113 average, it's just been superb from him. Well, for the first half of this... Players' Championship season, or the first half of the events we've had so far, the most frequent result for Justin Pike was a first-round defeat. 24. And all of a sudden, he had that run in late March at the European Open, and he's hardly suffered a first-round defeat since. And it that was the same 58. week where it, he suffered the, the death of his father. It is, it is baffling. It is heroic. But something has changed for Justin Pipe, and I, it has to be in his mindset or his approach or something. 99. But since that week, things have started to get better for him on the dartboard. And he's just fired in a 13 darter there that keeps him in touch with Peter Wright, who is averaging 100, but that is 14 points less than Justin Pipe right now. 100. Yeah, just to highlight that, highlight that point further, in the eight players' championship events before that run, he lost in the first round in all but one. Since that run, he's lost in the first round in one. 86. And there have been runs to quarterfinals, lots of last 16 runs, obviously today's run to the final. Something is, is, is just, it's chalk and cheese. One hundred and forty. Yep, time machine darts from Justin Pipe. Will his time come again? Twice a quarter finalist at the world match play, but will not be there next week. Peter Wright has 100. been in the mix at the match play for the last few years. Semi finalist last year, finalist the year before. He'll take on Vincent van der Voort on Monday night in Blackpool, and he might be going. With many more titles under his belt 180. than he would have thought a few weeks ago. Well, the one thing that you can't accuse Peter Wright of is not having faith and confidence in his own abilities. The entire last 18 months, when 100. people have said, oh, 2017 was your incredible year, how many more things are you going to go and win? Or, or now they're starting to say you're defending lots of money, how are you going to cope with it? He's never batted an eyelid. He is completely confident, 41. even says, if I don't throw another dart for the rest of the year, I'm still going to be just about in the top ten. It's not it's not the end of the world. And I've got no money to defend at the Worlds for the last two years. I could end up higher in the rankings than I ever was. Peter Snape, uh, Fe Phil Taylor used to say if Snakebite doesn't make world number one, he needs to kick up the backside. Game shot. Well, it doesn't seem to need one this afternoon. Just keeping hold of that Break a throw advantage, Peter Wright averaging 102, leading by a couple of legs. That is still nine points behind Justin Pipe, by the way. 140. Well, th this is astonishing because Peter Wright is, he's not bossing this final, he's leading this final. But Justin Pipe appears to be... 100 having fantastic visits which lead to absolutely nothing. This reminds me of when Chris Doby played Michael Van Gerwen in a Pro Tour final and Doby averaged 110 and only got one leg. 60. We have got the final that has kind of reflected the day here in Barnsley because in the first round exactly half of the 32 seeds were beaten. So you've got Peter Wright, a big name, a title winner, world number six. And then Justin Piper, who's been 
languishing in the darting doldrums for some time, an unseeded player. Sure, Justin Pike will have been. 180. But in fact, I'm certain he would have been a, a number one seed in tournaments like this in years gone by. Well, he, he went to the Players' Championship Finals as a number one seed, of course. The Minehead, place where he's made three. Uh, sorry, two semi-finals, I believe. 57. One at the Players' Championship Finals. No, both at the Players' Championship Finals. Three times. There we go. So, yeah, he's a four-time major semi-finalist with his Grand Prix run as well. But... If you go, you know, the point you made at the start of this, where back in sort of 2012, 2013, Justin Pipe was the, the leading light of these two. I remember Mervyn King, who knows both of these guys very well, he used to play pairs with Peter Wright, but who was Mervyn King talking up as a potential major winner? It was 16. Justin Pipe, it wasn't Peter Wright. Double 19. Not the worst double for Justin to go straight for because he can land one on top of that and into the bed. No score. Hasn't quite worked out like that. And Wright could pick his pocket. Well, he took out two of these massive checkouts earlier on against Glenn Durrant. He could produce another here. A wary Justin Pipe was looking on from the back of the booth there. I think he feared that was going. He's going to have another crack at this. And he gets Game it this shot. time, Justin Pipe. And he will not let Peter Wright get too far ahead of him. This is a magnificent rear guard action from Pipe. Fifty-one. It's incredible for Pipe to peak in this final. He has had a couple of tumplus averages before today, but only a couple across 84. all the matches he's played. That was 39 before this afternoon. He's not threatened to do anything as good as this at any point all year. Well, on one of those, he averaged, it was 104 average almost. It was against Gerwin Price. He lost 45. the game. That was one of his first round defeats. And I remember him saying, because it was just before that weekend on the Euro Tour, he said, I'm playing well. I'm just not getting the results, which I've heard before. But he was right. But it's an interesting point about those that match against Gerwin Price because Pipe lost to Gerwin Price despite that 104 average in the first round. He then met Gerwin Price again in the first round the next day. Lost it 6-5. Price won both of those tournaments. Yeah. And today, <laughs> Justin Pipe has beaten Gerwin Price in round one. Yeah. <laughs> well, maybe. When Price meets Pipe, whoever wins, wins the whole thing. Because that is 180 number four. He's 21st of the day. And Justin Pike might be about to break back and level this game up. And then effectively, it's a first to four matchup with Pipe having the dart. Yeah, real slip from Peter Wright as well there. The mistake going into the treble four has allowed Pipe another visit, even if he doesn't clean it up here. 94. Well, I think Justin would almost prefer to have a look at double 10 than double top with the way his darts lie because, as you pointed out with the double 19, 95. he can build up into that double on the bottom half of the board. But this is where it gets tricky. Has to attack it. And that's the problem for Pipe. Needs to go left. He went right, caught Ten the flight. Tall. And now Peter Wright could... Make the most of it. He's survived a scare in this leg. First time his throw has really been under threat. But double 12 would keep the advantage in Peter Wright's pocket. That was a big chance. A huge chance. But Peter Wright, those two, three dark combination checkouts, the old Phil Taylor checkouts, you take those out consistently consistently it wins you games it wins you tournaments and Peter Wright 85. knows that more than 20 titles to his name he's hoovered up titles in Barnsley and Wigan and Milton Keynes and Crawley all of these places Crawley was where he beat Justin 36. Pike to win his third PDC title I 
has been an exciting day of action. Of course, all eyes on the big TV tournaments. We've just 96. had World Series events in Las Vegas and Cologne in Germany. And then the big one in Blackpool coming up next week. But there have been some magical moments here this afternoon. 60. Kyle Anderson producing a perfect leg in round one, in leg one of that match. All those shocks early on today. And it's a very interesting intriguing tale that is being played out today and tomorrow 40. for the players particularly that are in Blackpool because most of them have turned up to these tournaments and the kind of the likes of Gary Anderson in particular looking at practice getting the arm going again before the match play but someone like Peter Wright 95. could be going there with bags more confidence than he might have had had he not turned up this week well I would imagine when you're drawn in the first round against Vincent van der Voort, if you smashed him up 6-1 in a Pro Tour quarter-final less than a week before you face him at the match play, that gives you some sort of psychological edge, does it not? I'll put you on the spot, Dan, as our resident expert. Do you think that Michael van Gerwen made the right decision to not enter these tournaments based on his recent form? 100. I think you can probably read a bit too much into is World Series games. Yes, they've been slightly baffling the manner in which he's lost those matches against Martin Schindler and Michael Smith. One hundred and four. But I don't think you'll see him anywhere near as unfocused when it comes round to Blackpool. Well, of course, Van Gerwen has Steve Beaton in round one, a man who here, a nine darter against. Seven years ago now for the seaside. Treble 19, double 12 for Pipe to end this leg. Double six has to go. I feel it has to go. And it hasn't gone. 69. And now Peter Wright could move himself to the brink of victory here. Pipe was relying on that double six in the semi. Really helped him out. And look at him just peering over Get right shoulder. And it's inevitable because once again, Peter Wright takes out a two dark combination with the minimum of fuss. And Pipe is still averaging 103. This could be the highest average Justin Pipe has thrown all year. 140. But Peter Wright, that, that's the difference between them. It's not the averages. It's when Peter Wright has stepped up needing 78, needing 65. They've just gone. And Piper's been there ready to take advantage and he's not been allowed. 140. Yeah, Peter Wright has done everything that he's needed to do all afternoon. In fact, if you look at the players that he's played today, it's one of the hardest runs to a, a pro to a final that you could get over the course of a season. Mark McGinney in round one is a tough draw. Then Kim Hybrex, Dimitri Vandenberg, who he demolished with 113 average. Glenn Durant, who he had to come back from 4-0 and 5-2 against. Vincent van der Voort and then Gary Anderson. Yeah, and it's it's not like he's caught them on off days either. One hundred and twenty. That's unfortunate because Peter Wright, so far today, his opponents, their combined averages against him are more than ninety-seven. Now I know that it is inflated because Peter Wright's been playing brilliantly, so they're getting a lot of scoring visits, not getting loads of darts at double. But even so, Mark McGinney had a higher average than him. Uh, Kim, uh, Kim Hybrex was right with there with him. It was 100 average from Vincent van der Voort and Vincent only got one leg. That just shows you that Peter Wright has not only been playing brilliantly, but playing brilliantly whilst being put under pressure, just as he's been doing in this final here. It might be a way back for Pipe if Wright can't take this out, if he misses the ball. But he doesn't miss Game the ball. Shot. He does not give Justin Pipe a chance. This is the Peter Wright of 2017. This is the sort of stuff that Snakebite was doing on a weekly basis as he won a double digits in the number of titles. He was dominant in the early stages in the Euro Tour. He was dominant in the UK Open qualifiers. He won the UK Open. And he ended up winning the German Darts Masters for the first time at the end of that year as well. He's won that title back just a few days ago. And he is producing 42. this sort of stuff. And when he won the UK Open, he should have won the Premier League that year. That spell there, I think he was the best player in the world for a good three-month spell. If Peter Wright can get back to that, maybe a first Betfred World Match Play title could be his in the next week and a half. Darting dreams being lived out. The working-class heroes of the hockey. Peter Wright was 
let's let's have it right. Seen as a bit of a joke. Six or seven years ago, a journeyman PDC player who had colourful dreadlocks attached to his head and was fitting tyres for a living. Justin Pipe, a former tree surgeon. Look at them now. It wasn't that long ago that Justin Pipe seriously considered walking away from the game. He was talking at the at Ali Pali after a, a first round defeat as he looks at the treble 18 here. Uh, it's not going to go, but he is going to have another crack. He was talking about maybe going back to working as a tree surgeon. He made good money doing it. But he stayed on for days like this. And this could open doors for Pipe. 81. The door's not yet shut in this final. Game shot. Justin Pipe gets a fourth leg on the board. And yet, yeah, Peter Wright is the, the poster boy, and he's the inspiration for players of uh, the more veteran stars to resurrect their careers. Gary 100. Anderson, another one. Look how long it took him to win a first world title and the heights that he's reached since then. Quite. Well, I mean, Gary Anderson was a player who it seemed he seemed destined from a relatively young age that he was going to go and do incredible things. It just took him a long while to do it at the Worlds. Peter Wright only really became a top player in his 40s. Justin Pipe himself, I mean... He played darts and then went away from the game. He didn't want to be in the smoky pubs playing it. And sometimes people question the impact of these behind closed doors, floor tournaments. Of course, the players 100. need to play in them to qualify for the big tournaments. But that year, when Peter Wright went and reached the World Championship final, lost to Michael Van Gogh and had chances to make it much closer than it was in the end, Peter Wright had been picking up 91. floor titles and... The year or two wasn't what it is today. Didn't have all the opportunities to play on the big stage so often. And he gained a lot of confidence by beating the best players in the world and picking up titles on the floor. Justin Piper said it himself. It takes you a couple of years to learn how to win on the floor, then a couple of years to learn how to win on the stage. The Euro Tour has changed that. You get more opportunities to figure out how to be a big stage player. But you have to learn how to get the job done in tournaments like this. And Peter Wright is going to have a look at the 170 to try and get the job done in this one. And if he does, it would be a fitting way to do it because he has been incredible today. 45. Well, there may have just been an opportunity for Justin Pipe there, but he hasn't grasped that chance. Wright is not going to finish with the fanfare shot. But Pipe is going to have to produce something special of his own to stay alive in this decider. He's done this a few times today, Peter. I think he might be a bit paranoid about Matthew. getting the, the numbers wrong. It seems pretty straightforward, but he leaves himself one of those two darters he's been taking out with regulation here. Can Justin give himself a dart to save his skin? Is it there? 87. Oh, my word. I thought it was in. Well, his dart blocked our view. But all he can do is watch on and witness Peter Wright. Well, he's found 20 there. 52 left. He's gone 12 for double top. 32. And it's over the top. And just in pipe. Has the chance to break the throw here and get a little bit closer to right in this match. Game shot. The pipe dream is still alive. That is the first time that Justin Pipe has broken Peter Wright's throw. If he can hold here, there is just one leg in it. Dave Chisnell and Glenn Durrant. That went all the way to a last leg decider. 59. Harry Ward and Max Hopp. That went all the way to a last leg decider. They're the only two finals in the Players' Championship Series this year which have gone to a 15th and deciding leg. 100. Justin Pipe is averaging more than he has averaged in any single game in the whole series of Players' Championship matches that he's played so far in 2019. 134. But he might have to find a 12 darter somewhere. Maybe two. 
to stop Peter Wright. Well, Pipe needs to do to Peter what Peter did to Glenn Durrant earlier on. 100. But he's still in it. He's fighting. Well, irrespective of what happens, and, and that might be a, a fatal blow for Justin Pipe's hopes, this is, it's been a heroic run and an incredible performance in the final from him and an, an enormous amount of positives to take from today. It's just a shame that there's only a couple of players' championship events in the next couple of weeks after tomorrow. Yeah, I do hope even if Justin Pipe is on the wrong end of the result here that he hangs around and he managed to catch a couple of words with him because yeah, it definitely. really is a, a story. The resurrection of the force. 177. Absolute perfection in the setup shot. And it forces Justin Pipe to produce perfection to stay alive. And he cannot do it on this occasion. And Peter Snake bite right will get match darts to take the title, his first ranking 100. title of the year, to add to his World Cup and World Series victories. Just weeks ago, had not picked up a win. Game shot. And now he has three. Peter Wright takes the title here in Barnsley, defeating Justin Pipe, who appeared in the final for the first time in around four years. A wonderful story for the force, a nice sign of respect between the players, an emotional day, I'm sure, for Justin Pipe, who's returned to the final of a PDC tournament, but Peter Wright picks up his first ranking title of 2019. What timing, ahead of the world <laughs> match play, and Danny's downstairs, I hope to have a word with both players. That, okay. Is it a heater? It's, it's, <laughs> yeah. it's a heater, it's a light. Come on, I want to speak to both of you. We're talking into that camera there. Peter, you come on this side. Come stand here. Just in here. Um, first off, Peter, Congratulations, three titles now. We said when you won the World Cup, it could be the start of you picking up a number of titles. That's happening, isn't it? Yeah, 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 but they're not quite the same darts. I've, I've, I've changed the points uh, from uh, the weekend because I needed to uh, try and score more and be more consistent. Well, it's worked, hasn't it? I mean, the it's number it's of... It's worked well, I've had to be... 100 know, averages all day, pretty much. Uh, yeah, most of, most, most <laughs> of the day, yeah. You know, uh, most of the day I've had to, you know, I've played some fantastic players all the way through. And then obviously playing Justin in the final is, uh, you know, it's, it's good to see old Justin, not old Justin, but uh, Justin has been working very hard getting his game back. You know, he, he missed a couple of chances earlier on that, you know, he let me off and, you know, he, you know, I, I capitalised. Look, this man winning a, a second title in a matter of days is a story, Justin, but you being here in the final is a massive story itself. And things over the last four months, they've just suddenly got better for you on the dartboard. Yeah, well, when, when I was on my way up, me and Pete, we used to practice together and we used to, you know, we used to really have a good old chat, didn't we, Pete? And, um, and, and you know, we, I think we pushed each other on a little bit. And, um, you know, watching Peter win last weekend was fantastic. And um, to be fair, Dan, looking at that 50% for Peter and 33% for me, that's what killed me. And... Um, you know, that's the difference. P Peter's really consistent with scoring and doubles. And um, but yeah, you know, we're, we're we're getting back there. We're getting back there. I'll be in a match we're play next year. <laughs> what, what, what's what's changed, Justin? I mean, I, I the Euro Tour early this year, where it was an emotional weekend for you. It was heroic. I know you'd lost your father and everything, but since then, it's just every tournament you play in. It's last sixteen, or it's a quarter, or it's a final here today. And is it you just approaching the game differently? What is it? It's my family, I think, um, pushing me on, wanting me to do well and um, be home all the time. Um, you know, working, I've, I've gone back to work because I've always worked since since I was 12. And, um, you know, <coughs> I've had 10 years off and that's not good for anybody, you know, especially my age. <laughs> and um, I want to go back to work and I want to earn a buck away from darts and, um, you know, keep loose and keep, you know, and when I'm throwing now, I, f I just feel good and I feel free and, you know, my muscles feel good. Um, and I'm, you know, not in the practice room for four hours, five hours a day, going numb from there up, you know. And, um, enjoying yeah, enjoying, enjoying it. When it yeah, absolutely. When I come away to play darts now, I want to play darts. I'm not just going through the motions. And I, I want to come and I want to play. Well, it's working. It's been superb today. Congratulations. Thank you. Absolutely Thank you. superb. Thank uh, you. But Peter, I'll give you the final word. 
the, some of the stuff today, 113 average against the Mitri, the uh, big win against Vincent van der Voort. Yeah, five, right? and you'll play Vincent at the match play as well. <laughs> Do you fit? You've been saying, I'm going to get back to where I was in 2017, and I am going to get better. Do you feel you are back to that level in 2017 yet? Because some of the stuff no. today has looked like it. No, no, not yet. Oh, yeah. No, no, not yet. No winning. Be there tomorrow? It could be there. Yeah, playing the darts, yeah. <laughs> 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 well, look, uh, he will be here tomorrow. Justin will be here tomorrow. We've got Players' Championship 20. It reaches the uh, two-third stage of the Players' Championship Series. It is the last action that we have ahead of the Betfred World Match Play. Uh, Justin Pipe is back winning games and threatening to win tournaments. This man has started winning tournaments, and he's very, very keen to carry on doing so. We'll see you tomorrow.